What's my fantastic squad? Your boy Sad Tech with the Yes, your title, man. We're gonna check out Mr. Balling Gruesome Crime Card on camera. Your boy got his blue light glasses on, but I play 35 bucks for so you know I'm gonna be wearing these in my videos from now on, especially with the light hitting me right in the face. But we're gonna check this out, man. 23 minute video, so we'll get y'all popping whatever y'all wanna get. Hey man, let's get straight into it, man. Mr. Balling back with another one. Love his videos. The next time you're it, out man. walking around the streets of most gruesome crime caught on camera. Alright, man, let's see what you got. Look up. Chances are good you will find a camera somewhere nearby. Because yeah, as back, of publishing back, this video everywhere. right now today, London is one of the most surveilled cities in the entire world Amen. with citizens being filmed up to 70 times a day. Now, Damn. the reason for all of these cameras Damn, times a day, golly. to deter and more effectively prosecute criminal activity. But Amen. the vast majority of the footage, these hundreds of thousands of cameras all over London capture every day is just normal people doing normal things. Back. But okay. periodically, these cameras will capture people doing just horrible, illegal things. And Damn. today, I'm going to tell you the story so behind London, one of those types of videos. Now, at first glance, the video clip, which we're going to play, will not be that shocking. But trust me, with context, it's horrifying. But before we get into that okay. story, if you're okay. a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place yes, because sir. that's yes, all we sir. do, and we upload once a week. Once so a week. if that's of interest to you, in your will, please give the like button a treasure map that I leads to a it. pot of gold. However, replace the gold with a $6 gift certificate to Blockbuster. Also, please subscribe that's to like. our channel and turn on okay. all notifications we're talking, we're so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. Okay, let's get into today's story. Alright, let's get Mr. Baldwin. Let's get it. Get straight to it! On the morning of Friday, June 11th, 2021, in a suburb in the northwest of London, a man named David Klein woke up David. to his early morning alarm. David rolled out of bed, he got dressed, and he very carefully made his way downstairs to start getting ready for work. Mm -hmm. As David moved around this old brick house he was in, he was very careful not to make much noise because he didn't want to wake up his roommate, a 67-year-old okay. widow named Deborah Chong. Debra was Deborah. technically David's landlord, but she didn't charge him any rent. Oh. The two had met in church, and when Debra really? had learned that David didn't really have a place to live, she had immediately volunteered her house and told David to come live with her for free. David Damn. couldn't believe her. a real one. What the hell? Generosity and immediately took her up on the offer. And then after yeah, he had BMW in the front. Oh, yeah. And he learned that he was far from the first person who Deborah had allowed to come and live in her house rent free. It would turn out Deborah, whose late husband had given her a ton of money in his will, felt mm. like it was her responsibility and her duty to yeah. use her ample resources to house people that were kind of down on their luck. She said it was her way of serving God. Also, David got the impression that Deborah just liked having people living with her in her home. I it feel it. I happy. feel it. I, I, I'd, I'd kind of be sad living alone. Notice a distinct but change I'm not, I'm also in Deborah's personality around the time in. the COVID. But I guess it's not pandemic. random stranger. Than at a church, so they probably been going for a little while, but I'm not inviting no. At that time, Deborah, like many other people, was very concerned about this global health crisis and wanted to learn more about what was happening and what could happen in the future. And so the way she did that is she obsessively began going on YouTube and began consuming COVID-19 related content and Damn. political content surrounding COVID-19 and the pandemic and lockdowns. But instead of becoming more educated and well-versed on what was happening in the world, world, mm -hmm. Deborah's constant consumption of COVID-19 related content on YouTube really just made her feel incredibly stressed out and anxious. And as David began to see firsthand, Deborah's sudden high levels of anxiety really began wreaking havoc on mm -hmm. her life. Years earlier, mm -hmm. Deborah was officially diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, which mm -hmm. is a mental illness that causes bouts of psychosis, which is like losing touch with reality. Uh -huh. Now, pre 
pre-COVID, pre-pandemic, her symptoms were so mild that she basically led a totally Damn, normal life. COVID. But once the pandemic started and her YouTube quest for information caused that spike in stress and anxiety, mm -hmm. it caused a spike in her symptoms. And so she began suffering from frequent and lengthy hallucinations and delusions. Oh, One time, no. David came home from work, and when he went inside the house, he found Deborah sitting at the kitchen table, diligently writing these handwritten letters to various British public figures. Oh, and when David asked her what she was doing, she explained to nah, him... Nah, David, I'm moving out, bruh. I'm calling someone for her, her safety and her help. But I'm leaving, bro. That's that just these scary. British public figures. Nah, but she's a real one though. She let you live in her house for rent free, so I get it. I get it. You gotta help her out. You gotta help her out. But like, I don't know. You definitely gotta call someone because you definitely not gonna be to directly to her, her through the YouTube videos yourself. she was watching. And so these handwritten letters were her response letters back to these public figures. In May of 2021, Deborah's hallucinations had gotten so bad that doctors intervened and forcibly injected her with an antipsychotic medication. That's and wild. while these meds definitely reduced Deborah's symptoms, they, they also had some pretty negative uh, side effects as well. Namely, what? they totally curbed her appetite and they made sleeping really challenging. Yeah, and so pretty skinny. quickly, those two side effects combined made Deborah feel really weak and tired yeah, basically she's... all the time, to the point where she sometimes needed David to literally hold her up by her uh, arm just to walk down the street. Now, David, of course, had no problem helping Deborah with yeah. whatever she wanted. Yeah, this is what I'm going to comment for. What did you guys say you got to leave? Nah, you got to help her out, bro. You got to help her out for sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. Not bad. I mean, she had done so much for him, but David had work, and so he was only really available mm. to help her in the mornings and in the evenings during the week. And so he had actually spoken to Deborah about hiring a full-time caretaker. Because that would be shady, bro. Just leaving her alone after she gave you rent free. So yeah, yeah, you definitely got to live with her and just take care of her at the level she needed yes, all the time. Yes, and Deborah was open to it. She actually called a company that offered that service, and they told her they would get someone out to her, but it would take some time before her caretaker was actually assigned to her. Now, David was really pleased with this development, but he really wished they would speed it up. Because again, every time he was away yeah. all day at work, he knew Deborah someone, was home by herself. Like a doctor and so, someone with you, like, you're not, you're not trained to do all that stuff. I mean, walking around is cool and stuff, but like, you need like someone checking so up on her. Just something was going to happen to her when he was gone. So after David gathered up all of his things and very quietly made his way from the kitchen to the front door, he paused for a moment and said a silent prayer in his head for Deborah's safety and protection while he was away at work. And then he opened the front door, quietly went outside, shut the door behind That's him, the last and headed off to work. That's the last time. A few hours later, David came home from work. He went back inside of the house. And there. the first thing he did is he called out for Deborah. But Deborah there. didn't call back, and the house was very quiet. And so there. David took off his shoes and walked around the first floor, kind of calling out for Deborah as he walked. But again, there was no answer. And so after walking the whole first floor and not finding her, he yelled one more time really loudly, Hey, Don't Deborah, are you here? And after hearing nothing, he pulled out his phone and he called Deborah. And as the phone was ringing, he could hear Deborah's phone ringing upstairs. And so he thought, okay, maybe Deborah is upstairs. She fell asleep and her phone's just next to her on the bed. And so with David's phone still calling Deborah's phone, David began walking upstairs. And when he got to the top of the stairs, he just followed the sound. <laughs> I call this sound effect. They make it so much better. Deborah's ringing phone into her now bedroom. And disgusting. when he went in there, Deborah was not in there. Her phone she was walked though, away. And so were her glasses. And she got to get hit by like a bus or something. She got to get hit by like a bus or something that caught on camera. Or car is my guess. On the bed. Those were two items that Deborah would bring with her anywhere she went. And so trying not to panic, David called out a few more times for Deborah, but again there was no answer. And so after quickly searching her bedroom and not finding her, he searched all the other rooms upstairs, but again, she just was not there. She was not in the house. And so David began calling and texting friends from church and other people that knew Deborah to see if anybody had heard from her or knew where she was. But no one did, and the only only people who had recently talked to her said she was totally incoherent, talking about spirits and demons uh, and the nah. destruction of all mankind. Nah, and so, believing Deborah must be suffering from a schizophrenic hallucination somewhere out in the city, David picked up his phone again and he called the police. 
When the police showed up at the house, David filled them in on what was going on, and the police told him, hey, look, we'll go back and review all of the CCTV camera yeah, footage yeah. taken from outside and of they, your house. We're bound to see footage of Deborah leaving her house at some point, and then we can just watch where she goes. And so David felt reassured, and the police felt very confident, but when the police went they back cut, to the station and the... began reviewing all of this security footage taken from roughly outside of Deborah's that's house, a crime. oh, that's a crime! Oh, that means someone probably tried to rob her or something. There was my... no footage of her I ever. Was like, I thought I was, I'm doing my gruesome accident on camera. Not leaving the house. The there was only footage the day before of Deborah going into ever leaving the house. There was, there was no house. evidence. There was no footage oh of her God. ever leaving the house. The there heck? was only footage the day before of Deborah going into the house, what? but she never left. And so naturally, the police went back to Deborah and David's house, and they thoroughly searched that house, believing Deborah had to be in there somewhere. But despite Is searching like a back, everywhere in this house, in every crawl space, in the attic, the basement, every closet, everywhere, she wasn't there. The it would take the police nearly a month, but they would eventually figure out where Deborah went. And to say they were surprised at where she went is a massive understatement. But to understand what happened, we have to go back to the very beginning of Deborah's very strange disappearance story. What? The creepy ass sound. Last weekend, I looked over and I saw old Seagull Lung sitting at his oh, no. miniature 1999 era G3 right, iMac, and I couldn't help but notice he was looking a little downtrodden. And when right, I saw w, what he was doing w, on his w, iMac, I w. knew what. The ball in, or click the link in the description below. Okay, back to the story. W W ad W ad placement. It all started about 10 months before Deborah actually went missing the fuck? in August of 2020. That month, Deborah met a 36 year old woman named Gemma Mitchell at one of her church prayer groups. Like Don't Deborah, she Gemma was very prayer. religious, and so the two women became fast friends despite being 30 years apart in age. Deborah would confide in Gemma about her mental health struggles, and Gemma would confide in Deborah about her house slash financial Deborah, troubles. Basically, Gemma, a couple years earlier, had given money to a contractor to fix up her house, but the contractor had taken her money, not done any work, and then run off, basically mm. robbing Gemma. But Damn. Gemma really needed to do these renovations, That's crazy. so she wound up hiring That's a second crazy. contractor who did begin work, but during this process, Gemma realized she would never be able to recover the money that was stolen from yeah, her from the a, first that's, that's contractor. That's and so when she realized she wasn't going to get that money, she knew she would not be able to fully pay the second contractor for his work. And so when the second contractor found out he was not going to get paid, he stopped work immediately, despite the fact that there was no working heat in Gemma's house and there was a huge hole in her roof. <laughs> but Gemma had no way to fix this, and so she and her mom were just living in this house that was just totally freezing all the time. Damn. Deborah had been so moved by Gemma's situation that very she quickly after meeting her, she offered 200,000 oh. pounds to Gemma oh to finish God. the renovations on her house oh, under shit. the condition that one room in Gemma's new house would be solely dedicated to Christian ministry. Gemma was overwhelmed with gratitude. Yeah, she could not okay. believe that Deborah was willing to do this for her. And so, of course, she agreed to her terms without okay. any hesitation. Okay. After that, the two women began texting all the time about this renovation project. Deborah would suggest paint colors and different things to do with the inside of the house. And Gemma would text updates yeah, about the different has, contractors she, she had talked to, to do with this cry. She who could to do, do with pieces this. of the renovation. I Deborah was feeling. always inviting Gemma over to her house, and she she even what began referring to Gemma as her sister. And Gemma loved it because Gemma actually had always wanted to be much closer with her own biological sister, but they had kind of drifted apart. And so for Gemma, Deborah really did feel like the sister she was supposed to have. Damn. But their relationship was about to change drastically. In May of 2021, she didn't get so eight room. months after the two women met for the first time, she didn't get that room. and one month before Deborah would vanish. 
Debra was forcibly injected with that antipsychotic medication in order to combat her paranoid schizophrenia. And right after Debra got this injection, she began treating Gemma totally differently. She basically stopped communicating altogether with Gemma, and then in the rare times she would text Gemma, it was just to berate her about being a hoarder or being too messy and sloppy. Gemma didn't really know what to make of her friend's new behavior, but she knew, you know, Deborah was going through a really tough time, and so Gemma just kind of took the abuse and didn't say anything. When Gemma did try to talk to Deborah by asking about the renovation project, which was quickly approaching on the horizon, Deborah would tell Gemma not to talk about it, that it was too stressful and just don't bring it up again. And then one day, Deborah just called Gemma out of the blue and said, I'm not funding the renovation anymore. It's over. You're on your own. Gemma yeah. felt totally devastated and pleaded with Deborah to please reconsider. Okay, but Deborah yeah. was not about to change her mind. And in fact, on this call, she would tell Gemma, you know, hey, you should just sell your house. And in fact, until you sell your house, don't contact me. And then Deborah what? hung up. Gemma didn't know what to do. She felt what? like she really could not sell her house because it was kind of like a family heirloom that had been passed down for generations. And so it just felt wrong to sell it. But on the other hand, without help, she would never have enough money to fix the house up. And so she was totally stuck. And she felt like her only option was to go Damn to it. Deborah and have one more conversation and just really plead her case and see if maybe there was some chance Deborah would change her mind. So on the morning of June 11th, 2021, so this is the day that Deborah goes missing, Gemma showed up on Deborah's porch and rang her doorbell. She arrived just after David had left for work. A few oh, moments later, shit. Deborah. She was fine, hey. She, hey, she was waiting for that boy to leave. What the hell? No. Lee made her way to the door. She opened it up. She saw Gemma out there and asked, you know, what's going on? And Gemma just very politely said, would you please let me come in? And can we just talk one more time about the renovation? And Deborah, well, how did not realize, how the hell did not see Gemma come in? Like, like, like this is like a month later. Like when they were like, oh, we finally know what happened. They were like, I did not realize, oh, Gemma came over. Very enthused at the idea of having this conversation said, you know what? Okay, come on in. And so Gemma would go inside and the two women would go sit down and they'd exchange some pleasantries. And then at some point when there was a break in the conversation, Gemma brought up the renovation. She had actually written out this whole speech about how incredible Deborah was and how these renovations, if they went through with them, would mean so much to her, Gemma and her family. Family. But as Gemma is going through this pitch, Deborah just cuts her off and says, Gemma, I'm sorry, but my decision is final. I am not paying for the renovation. I'm sorry. A little while later, both Gemma and Deborah would leave Deborah's house. And there actually is CCTV footage. Yeah, what the hell? How the hell did you not see this a month ago? What? Shows the pair walking on Deborah's street right outside of her house. Oh, yeah, that's However, the, the reason the police did not flag this footage when they first were scanning okay. all of that footage okay. to figure out where Deborah went is because when you watch the footage of the two women together, it actually only looks like one person. It looks like Gemma. But Gemma is wheeling a huge suitcase right oh. behind her, and as it would turn out, Deborah was inside of it. It's assumed that after Deborah was forcibly given that antipsychotic medication for her paranoid schizophrenia, that it really leveled her out. She was suddenly thinking very clearly for the first time in months. And in this clear state of mind, it's believed she realized the 200,000 pound yeah. gift she was giving to Gemma, someone she barely knew, was a bad decision. And so she just wanted to back out of it. And so back inside of Deborah's house, when Deborah and Gemma are sitting there and yeah. Gemma is doing her speech to try to convince Deborah to change her mind, and Deborah is saying, no, my final answer is no, it's over. Jesus. That's when Gemma snapped. She grabbed a blunt object, we don't know what it was, and she smashed Damn. Deborah right over the skull and fractured her skull, Damn, causing please. Deborah to fall unconscious and slump onto the floor. And then Gemma leapt on top of Deborah's unconscious body. Gemma pulled Pulled out a knife and cut Deborah's head off, and then. Whoa! 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 Well, there was none of this at the crib. 
There was no blood, nothing missing. There was no what? She just cut her head off. What is going on? Body, Gemma pulled out a knife and and she got a real fr like 200k. You want 200k? Cut Gemma's head off. And then afterward, Gemma cleaned up all the blood in the house and then stuffed Deborah's body and That's tough. She cleaned all that up. Like she been doing it like there was no hesitation. This is a predetermined, like pre I pre premeditated, bro. Like she came at the crib came in the crib with the knife. She did what she did and she didn't panic. She was like, oh, I'm gonna clean up the blood, we're gonna get in the Okay, we're gonna throw it this way, that way, like, and hey, she had this shit planned, bro. That big suitcase, and then after Gemma stole several legal documents and a copy of Deborah's will, she walked out of Deborah's house with Deborah in the suitcase behind her. Gemma would walk She's with Deborah crazy. all the way back to her house, and then she would leave the suitcase with Deborah still inside of it in her backyard. She would just leave it there for two weeks, and then after those two weeks, Gemma would take the suitcase again, still with Deborah's body inside of it, two and weeks. transport it 250 miles away to a seaside town where wow. she Wow, wow, the fact that they got her 250 miles. She drove 250 miles thinking, hey, no one gonna catch me now. There's no one gonna catch me now. And you're gonna drive 250 miles back just to get caught? Oh, baby. 50 miles Freaking, that away is to a sweet. seaside town where she would dump it. And in wow. that seaside town, some vacationers would discover Deborah's body and call it into the police. On July 6th, 2021, wow. police would arrest Gemma on suspicion of murder. When they arrested her, they showed up at her house and used a battering ram to smash in her front door. And then when the door finally literally smashed open, Gemma was just standing there waiting for the police as if she knew this was going to happen Stupid. and she's just waiting to be taken away. When the police Dummy. would actually go like, into that, she knew this was going like, to happen. Like, come on, man. You know what you did. The fact that you live with that on a regular basis, that you cut a person's head off, and did all that premeditated shit, bro. Like, that is next level. That's not just a regular person, bro. Nah, man. And she's just waiting. Because she didn't want to give you 200k to renovate your own house? Like, what? God damn, bro. That is wild. Be taken away. When the police would actually go into Deborah's house and nuts. search it, this they would the find a fake copy of Deborah's will where all of Deborah's estate was handed over to Gemma and Gemma's mother. In October of 2022, Gemma was found we're, guilty we're, we're of murder and it. sentenced to life in prison damn. with a minimum term of 34 years. Two damn, now, now you're a stupid ass gonna be in prison trying to renovate that house. Now how you get that 200k. God damn, you took away a life, bro. That is nuts. Nice. Instead, Gemma insists Better. she did not kill Deborah. Oh, yeah. So, that's going to do it. Because that body just magically just followed you to that 250 mile. Like, that shit was just randomly there. Her, her papers were just randomly in your house. Like, what? Got something out of this episode. and you That is crazy. This is another like of the video. That was nuts. I think that people who don't watch his videos think his stories would be scary. But once you start watching the content, the way he tells the story makes you feel like, yep, 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 yep. Mr. Incredible. Yes, sir. The fact that even after she took the meds and had a clear mind, she, had, she still allowed that guy. She was helping live. <laughs> Yeah, my God, that's wild. That is nuts. Demon encounter? Oh, hell no. What the hell? A disturbing secret? What the hell? That looks like a ghost. Oh, I watched that one. What the fuck? I do not remember watching that one. This hospital has a disturbing secret. What the hell was that? I'm pretty sure I reacted to it if I watched it. That sounds scary. What the hell? All right, man. That is wild, bro. Is <laughs> she really... <laughs> oh my god, oh, it's doing all the most to renovate the, that, hey, it's whoever that first, uh, real estate, whatever that shit's called, the, the, the first person that stole her money, this is all your fault, my boy, you watching the video like, damn, I should just renovate her house and everything would have been chill, man, but hey, you stole her money, 
she got a second real, real whatever it's called and she couldn't pay and they that's tough, man. That's tough. Rest in peace, Deborah, man. She did not deserve that. She had your head chopped up by a quote unquote friend. Hey, yo, that's tough. Right, that's gonna do it for that video. If you enjoyed it, subscribe and that road too can help. But, man, we're going out.